so we are we, we, we were discussing about we discussed machine torque and connecting to the joint uh, now uh, what we have left is to make sure that the angle velocity between the rod uh, angular velocities of the rod and the motor are the same so we'll do that by measuring the angular velocity of the revolute joint and specifying it across the DC motor. Now you might ask why can't we just measure the angular velocity around the DC motor and specify it as an input to the revolute joint. This is a valid question but now you can do this because in a revolute joint or whatever kind of joint you can specify both kinetics and kinematics and if you do that then there won't be anything left to calculate so if you are measuring the torque and giving it as a signal then you can specify the angular velocity you will need to measure the angular velocity and specify it across the mod that will be quite visible uh, when I double click on it and move into specifications and sensing. So in the configuration for the revolute joint I can specify what I am actuating and what I am sensing. I am providing a torque by input and uh, sensing the velocity. This is a revolute joint by velocity it means angular velocity. And uh, when I do that, two more ports pop up in the revolute joint block, and these two are signal ports. And connect the ideal torque sensor to this port. Well, but I'll leave it till later. Notice the directions of these signal ports one input and one output. So we can measure the angular velocity from this revolute joint. And how do we specify it across the motor? For that, we'll be needing an ideal angular velocity source. Well, in reality, uh, we don't really have another source of angular velocity, which is just a kind of tactic or strategy that we'll use to specify a measured angular velocity across the motor. Even though it has the name a velocity source it doesn't mean there's another something generating an angular sort angular velocity it does not mean that and this needs to be connected in parallel to the motor once again uh, you need to figure out what the direction should be make sure but these two are pointing in the same direction when connected in parallel so uh, this is the positive direction for the motor this is the positive direction for the source so if I connect uh, I can make the connections like this but if I do it Then this would be left dangling. So what I'll do instead is connect the C's together first. Uh, connect these two C's together first and connect the R and C. Just so that it, these uh, sensors and specifiers existing quite a clear circular path. And afterwards I'll make the signal connections right. so now you will see that what I have given over here will be quite different from what I have uh, specified in the slides the order will be quite different what's what's similar is 
in both cases the, the two sensors and the motor exist in a loop and uh, in terms of uh, sensors connected in series the arrows are pointing in the same directions and in terms of uh, sensors connected in parallel once again the arrows are pointed in the same direction they share a common ground and uh, the arrows are pointing away from that ground and uh, i just noticed i haven't specified the ground If you recall what I just said, and come uh, and uh, you'll see that both diagrams have those two same characteristics. You can uh, make the comparison on your own time. So well, that's all with regards to making the interface or making the coupling. And let's see what else we have remaining to do. So we specified the regular joint, we specified the rod, we specified the motor. Uh, yes, we haven't parameterized the motor or the constant voltage source. As I can remember, we were dealing with 12 volt motors. Let's specify the voltage. And after doing it multiple times, I kind of remember the parameters for our uh, DC motor as well now. So, we'll not look up the data sheet. Uh, this is my preferred method of specification and the only possible method for our 775 motor based on. Stall torque was 0.7 Newton meter and outward speed was around 18,500. Uh, this is supply voltage of 12. And I'm not specifying these things, these, it's, uh, it's a quite negligible compared to the actual energy as connected to the model. Right. Mm, yeah, we specified the geometry and the inertia joint. Nothing to specify in this. If you want to know what these things mean, just right uh, look it up on the help. Now I remember that we haven't specified the direction of gravity. Now, uh, on double clicking on it, there's a vector that I can use to specify the direction and magnitude of gravity. And I'll need to specify the components of gravity in the direction. Uh, the components of the gravitational vector with the coordinate uh, the, with the unit vectors of the world frame as uh, the unit vector. so that's so the world frame is mm, kind of the global coordinate system and these two are quite local and figuring out the exact direction I need to specify the gravity in based on by like, doing some analysis is possible but a quite cumbersome task. What I'll do is I can bring up graphical visualization and the, through that visualization I'll figure out in which direction I need to specify the gravity. So that's quite and useful tool if you are dealing with complex systems as well. 